we've already looked at the ribbon in the backstage view and the quick access toolbar. Let's look at the lower part of the window. We want to look at the status bar okay. and the view options. Now a lot of people aren't aware of the status bar, but we've already visited it earlier today. Do you remember what we looked at on the status bar? Well, if I remember right, it said enter here, but now it says something different. It says ready. That's correct. When it said enter, we were actively in a cell entering information. So we're not in a cell entering in information, so it just tells us it's ready for us to do something. All right. If you were actually putting in a formula, it says point there. Okay. So it will change based on what you are doing within the spreadsheet. It's telling you the status of the spreadsheet. So that might be a great place to look if I'm trying to do something and in a cell and it's not reacting like I expect exactly. it to. Exactly. Exactly. That's the first thing I do when students tell me, hey, Barbara, the buttons are grayed out. Why can't I do something? And usually they're in enter mode or they're in point mode or something along those lines. Good. So that's one of the things that we have available to us is the, the status of the worksheet or the workbook. Now over on the right-hand side of the screen, we have view buttons and you'll see that there are three little squares and you're pointing to the first one. This is normal view and move your mouse away just for a moment. Notice that one's highlighted. Mm -hmm. So we're currently in normal view. What do you suppose normal view is? Oh, well, I would assume that that's where we can just enter some information in. Right. It's just the spreadsheet in its raw appearance where we see it when we first come into Excel. That is our normal view. Okay. Now the second one, if you notice, it says page layout. Go on and click on that one. All right. And you'll see that we see the boundary of the page. So we're seeing our margins. We can see where a header might would go. Let's... There's okay. also a ruler up at the top. So it tells us kind of how big the page is. And if you were to scroll to the right, just click on the scroll bar. Notice right. you see a separation between pages. So it's literally a view of pages as they would print. Now sometimes we want to get a feel for how we're going to print and where our pages are going to occur. We call those page breaks where the actual page ends and the next page begins. Mm -hmm. And the next view is page break preview. So let's click on that one. Whoa, this looks different. Right. Now you first have this pop-up and it says that you can adjust the page breaks by clicking and dragging them with your mouse. We're going to not choose that checkbox, but if you were at your own computer and you understood that, you could choose that checkbox that says do not show this dialog again, and that box would never pop up again when you go into page break preview. Okay. So once you understand that, you can get rid of it. But let's just click OK. And notice it says page one kind of in a watermark behind the page. We have a blue border around where the page is going to print. And if we use our up and down scroll bar here, we can scroll down and see everything is, appears to be going to print on this page. Well, I'll tell you, I use this particular spreadsheet a good bit. And one of the things that I have to work with and manipulate is highlighting just the data and not all of this text down below. So okay. could I change where this breaks here? Sure, because that pop-up told us we can move those page breaks. So if you put your mouse on the blue border at the bottom of the page, notice it changes into a two-way arrow. This is another shape our mouse cursor will take at times. And if you click and drag up, you literally will move that line and you can put it where you want it. I'd like it right about there. Okay, so let go and let's scroll down and see. And there you go. That is perfect. So now you don't have to worry about that information printing. So in this particular view though, this is not a great view to enter information, yeah. is it? No, you don't want to work in this view. It would not be the most efficient way to do it. So you'd want to go back out of this view. How do you think you can get out of this view? Well, I don't see an exit anywhere. Right. So would I just click on maybe another view? Right. You go back down there to the view buttons and you can choose whichever one you want. You probably want normal view. Yeah, that's the one so I we'll like click on normal view and there you are. All right, so we're back in our normal view. And one of the things you might notice is that your numbers are awfully tiny on this screen. And for somebody my age, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to read. Or sometimes you want to kind of zoom in on something to get a really good view of what you're trying to do. 
Next to the view buttons we have our zoom slider. It's currently at 100% and you notice you can click the minus sign and make it smaller. And see it Ooh, brings it down. That makes it harder to read. Which if you have a huge spreadsheet and you're just trying to see how many columns you have and all the columns on the page, that's a great way to do it. But for someone like me, I can't read it, so the plus sign on the other side oh, brings yeah, it on better. up and you can zoom it up and make it larger. You can also just grab the little pointer on that line and just drag it. Now, is this changing the size of the font that we're looking at? No, it's just your view. It's just changing how you see it on the screen. Everything's still the same font size. It's still laid out the same column width and the same row height. Okay, great. Now, one of the other things that we can do on our status bar is we can add information. It can give us more information about our spreadsheet. Oh, really? So if you click your right mouse button, Look oh, at all the stuff wow, available there's all to you. Of stuff. Everything with a check mark technically is already there. So, for example, if we had page numbers, it would show us page numbers. If we had um, scroll lock on, it would show us that the scroll lock is on. Let's do this. Let's choose the caps lock. Now, if you click back in your spreadsheet, we'll just get rid of that little menu. And notice we don't see anything in the status bar. Go on and turn on your caps lock on your keyboard. Do you see how it shows up down oh, there? Oh, yeah, it's telling me that it's on down here. Right. So if you're like me, sometimes you get that caps lock on because your pinky gets in the way and it hits the caps lock instead of the shift key. And all of a sudden you're typing the wrong way. And you can look down to that status bar and say, oh, caps lock's on. Oh, that's great. Now, if we right click on the status bar again, and let's say we don't want that, we could turn it off just by clicking on it. So it's kind of like a switch. Right. It toggles on and off, just like a switch. So if you move further down, there's some interesting, pretty cool things here. Notice we have some mathematical formulas. We can do an average. We can do a count. We can do the sum and various other things here. So let's turn on the average just by clicking on it, and let's turn on the sum. Okay. I noticed there's some numbers there. There are, and they are remembering the last time we did this. So I'm going to show you how that works. Okay. Now let's just click back into the spreadsheet. And why don't you, let's not highlight that range of data. Let's just highlight some numbers. And notice down in your status bar, just to the left of your view buttons, it tells us the average and the sum of the numbers you've highlighted. That is awesome. Now, does it do anything with that information? Does it put it anywhere? No, it really doesn't except for in that menu that we were just looking at. So right click again. So notice the average matches the average of the numbers that we chose. The sum matches the sum. But look at your spreadsheet. How many numbers do you have highlighted there? It looks like five. And the count in this says seven. That's because we didn't apply the count, so it's remembering whenever the last time was we did count. Okay. So if you were to turn off average and turn off sum, and then just click somewhere else in your spreadsheet and right click on the status bar again, if you wanted to go back and remember that average and sum until you turn it on again and highlight something else, it retains that information. Oh, that's great. So I can use it as a reference. Yes, it's a great new tool that they've added. Now, this is a fantastic file. We've been working with it for a while, but I'd like to go back and look at the first quarter file that you were working with so I can show you something that I think you're going to really like. Okay. So let's close this file. Up in your top right corner, you can close using the lower X. And it's up to you. This is your file, so save or don't save. And right behind it, we still have the file that we were creating earlier. Mm -hmm. Now, you have how many sheet tabs? Four. Four yeah, of them. Mm -hmm. January, February, and March. Have you any reason why you might want to look at January and February at the same time? Oh, I do that all the time. Actually, what's helpful is that I have to copy or reference the month with the summary tab and so I, I have to flip back and forth in between right. those all the time. Well, would you like to know a different way to do that? Yeah, that'd be great. I'm going to show you a way that makes it so much easier it's going to make life a lot easier for you. I okay. promise. Let's go up to our ribbon and we're going to go to the view ribbon 
And in the View ribbon, under the Window section, the very first button in the Window section says New Window. Now when we click this, it's going to open up a new window. And that new window is going to be an extra window of this very same file. So it's not a new file, mm -hmm. it's just a new window of right. the same file. Right. So we called this file First Excel File. And so this next one is going to be first Excel file with a 2 following it to let us know that it's a second copy. Okay. And you look up there and you see there's a 2 following the file name that lets us know that there are now two copies of it open. But now I still have to flip back and forth in between the two files. Yeah, but guess what? You don't have to. Okay. So let's go back up there and next to new window, do you see arrange all? I do. All right, let's click on that. And then you got to decide, do I want to see them um, side by side, on top of each other, or whatever. Let's just go with the tiled option and click OK. And notice you have one window on the left and one window on the right. Now the one on the right is our original. How do I know that? Well, it doesn't, uh, this one has two on the end of mm -hmm. it and this one has one. Exactly. So the one on the right is our original file and the one on the left is the copy that we just created. And it is a re-image of it. It's really not a copy. It's just a re-image of it. So where I'm looking at it, it's almost like I'm looking at it through two different windows. Okay. okay. So if I'm looking at the January tab here, I can come over here and look at the summary tab exactly. over here and then be able to, to utilize that data. Over right. There. You can compare the data, do whatever you would need to do. Click back on the January tab in that, partic in that file there, the one on the right. Now one of the things you also want to notice is one of these is active and one of these is not. Just like when you have multiple windows open, one of them is your active window, one of them is not. So if I was to do anything up in my ribbons, I'm actually manipulating what's going on in the file that's active, which is the one on the right. What are some of the signs that we see that lets us know it's the active one? Well, it's darker Okay. and it also has an icon in front of it. Sure. And then it also gives me the opportunity to uh, minimize or, or delete it as well. Right. You also notice you have the highlight on your column and your row, and you have your active cell outlined. Oh, okay. So those are other clues. How do you think you get to manipulate into the other file? Well, I, I think I just click inside sure. of it. Just click in it. And now, notice it's now the active window, and you can work in it. Now one other thing that you might want to do if there was a lot of data, think about the spreadsheet we were looking at a moment ago, is maybe you would need to look at the information and scroll down through the spreadsheet. Now notice as you're scrolling now, just the one on the right is scrolling. So let's go back and let's see, let's get them kind of in line with each other, okay. pretty, pretty close. Notice up in your window tab you have a view side by side, go on and click that. And the option right below that, synchronous scrolling, automatically comes available. Okay. Now let's scroll. And notice both windows are scrolling together. Now one of the things we can do is let's turn off the synchronous scrolling for a moment. Just click on that. And in the left-hand window, bring it up to the top so they're in the same position. Then turn on the synchronous scrolling, and you scroll, and you'll be in the left window this time. And oh, notice okay. it's exactly one for one. That's great, so that I can reference and make sure that I have the right information in one tab on the left-hand side versus another tab on the right-hand right. side. That's going to work out great. Yeah. It is a fantastic feature. I use it a lot. I have learned that there is a lot more to the status bar than I had originally thought. Isn't there? There's yeah. uh, all kinds of options in there. I can't wait to try some of those options. And then the other thing that I have learned is also the different views have different purposes. And so depending on what I want to do or look at, mm -hmm. those views can help me do that. And then lastly, this is great. I love the fact that I can look at the same file by using new window and look at them si not only side by side, but also scroll through those mm -hmm. at the same time so that I can re reference information um, in, in separate tabs, but the same file. Right. So that's a, a lot of great tools for me to use going forward. Uh, I can't wait to use those. And I bet you thought when I said status bar that this wasn't going to be a whole lot of information. Mm -hmm.